What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live in a living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Let me say that one more time. DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote. And maybe you can have me at your next event. I like to party with the people. The people need to be entertained. Speaking of the people need to be entertained, today on the program, Carmen Mills. Who's Carmen Mills? Well, you're going to find out in the next few minutes. So stick around for that. This week's shows, as we break out of quarantine, I have one public show every Friday night over at The Rab. I'm so appreciative of that. The Rab in Conway, Arkansas. That's uh, the video dance party, karaoke jam. Yeah, I said karaoke. You're the stars of the show. All I'm doing is pressing buttons. You pick it, I play it, you sing it, you're the star. How about that? They got a full bar, the kitchen's open, and the pool tables, they got a pool tournament on Friday night. So if you want to make some money, possibly, while you're hanging out on a Friday night at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, come on out and take part in that while you're waiting to sing right on stage right next to me uh, at the Rab. That's uh, 8 p.m. Friday nights uh, until about 1 in the a.m. So, yeah, so it's always a good time at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. All right, let's get into it with Carmen Mills. If, uh, if you're listening to the audio version of this, I did get Carmen Mills on Skype for the most part. <laughs> so uh, uh, get, um, uh, you, you'll, if, you, if you're listening to the audio version, I encourage you to check out the video version as well. That's on my YouTube channel youtube.com forward slash uh, user forward slash keys dan or just look up keys dan the radio what logo will be right next to me and you'll see it you'll go oh look at that there's carmen mills right there with keys dan uh talking and, uh, and saying a whole bunch of cool stuff about you know how she grew up so there you're going to learn a little bit more about carmen mills well let's skype her <laughs> skyping carmen mills now <laughs> I'm so bad at this stuff. But you're not. What? You're oh so good at it. Could you imagine 20 <laughs> years ago, people thinking, oh, you know what? I'm going to carry a whole recording studio in my pocket. No, nobody, no, nobody okay. thought that. Everybody was bringing these big giant video cameras, you know, way back when. And now you have a smartphone. That's a whole recording studio in your back pocket. Could you have imagined it, Carmen Mills? Could you have imagined it? Dude, I have to ask my daughter for help with everything. Like, Miranda, teach me this, teach me that. She just rolls her eyes at me and does it. So That's right. That's right. And how, how, how much of this, these things, oh, well, okay, I, uh, Carmen Mills, I guess you can give the people a little idea of who you are, uh, but uh, how, how much of this... Uh, these uh, social media things that that the kids are into. I know that you have four daughters, and and how how are they helping you with this social media? How much are you into? <laughs> well, let's see. I do Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, YouTube, uh, of course, Spotify, iTunes. So I mean, you know. Okay. And just emails. <laughs> the first four that you said are so, the ones that I deal with. I, I don't mess with the the other ones. That oh, even okay. you know cool. TikTok or Snap or I don't even know if if uh, Snapchat is even a. And I think uh, Facebook went ahead and, and ate their lunch when they did their Instagram stories. But uh, you know, I, I, okay, they give the people a little idea of who you are, Carmen Mills. Who am I? Who are you? Well, I'm I'm Carmen Mills. Can you hear me okay? Yes. So, I'm, uh, okay, cool. Uh, well, who am I? Um, I think I'm kind of complicated in some ways, but in some ways I'm really pretty easy, pretty simple. I, um, I'm a singer, songwriter. Um, first of all, I'm a wife and a mother. And then singer, songwriter, homemaker. Uh, let's see. Um, I've done a lot of different things in my life. I've I've done everything from random daycare to 
in a teacher's aid at different schools. Um, we've been worked in restaurants a few times, but I do all these and it's like I miss songwriting and I always end up coming back to that. So, and I'm, I'm just somebody like, who, um, I've been through a lot, you know, um, adopted and stuff and it's, uh, it's caused me to have some like anxiety, uh, depression, things like that, that I've been to counseling for numerous times, just saying. And I'm pretty honest about that stuff because uh, for years I used to hide that and pretend like that, that wasn't, you know, I wasn't really depressed or anything. But I find that the more you try to fake that and act like everything's okay, it just makes it harder and eventually you'll explode or you'll implode. So I try to be very honest and just say, hey, hey, if you are struggling or you feel alone or, you know, just feel like you can't handle life, it's, it's okay. And you're, you're not alone and, it's, you know, everybody struggles. So that's my platform is I just really like to be honest about struggling with those things. And um, if you listen to my songs, like really listen to the lyrics, you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. That's kind of who I am. So. Well, Carmen Mills, anybody that goes to the Carmen Mills Music uh, website that you've laid out, and it's a pretty good website. It tells a lot of people uh, a lot about you uh, and your story. And, you, you know, I, I do want to delve into some of the story. And, and you've just really brushed the broad strokes of it. You know, you were, you've come from very, very humble beginnings. And it says you were found at an orphanage by an American man. You know, like you were just sitting there. You know, just waiting for someone to come and get you. Yeah. How how old were you back in? I guess it was Costa Rica. I mean, tell that tell a little bit about that story. I'm sure you've you've told it a million times before, but I want to hear it in your words. So that way, the listeners can hear the feeling that you have when you say it. Okay, sure. Well, I was three years old. Um, what I was told, my mother was very poor and couldn't take care of me, and there were a lot. Of, she had a lot of children, so. She gave me away to a friend who didn't take care of me. So the police came and took me away and took me to this orphanage. And um, so this American, his name is Steve Crane, he came to Costa Rica looking to uh, adopt a child. And um, from what I understand, he went from orphanage to orphanage, like several. He had a missionary named Norey Liso who took him to all these orphanages. And he was like, how do I pick a child? There were so many of them that just wanted to be adopted. And the funny part is you say that I had my arms out waiting to be adopted, but actually, when he found me, <laughs> I did the complete opposite. I, um, he was like, so who's that little girl over there? And they're like, that's Carmen. And he's like, well, why does she have her back turned on us? And they said, because I didn't want to be rejected. So already as a three-year-old i had already learned you know the patterns because i don't know do you probably know that you have children right um yeah. the ages of zero to three are are super um i, I know for those are the formative years in your life and um that's when you learn to trust and believe that your needs are going to be met and things like that and I was completely opposite because I didn't have I, I didn't get held a lot. I didn't have food. Um, so when my when he found me, I was like, I turned my back on him, like, nope. <laughs> and so he was like, he uh, I guess he decided to come over and pick me up, which was a big mistake because I had uh, super razor sharp teeth from eating sugar cane because there wasn't <laughs> a lot of food. Yeah, for real. <laughs> and so I bet him. You know, and he he like, okay, she's the one. That's, <laughs> you that's put your I'm mark into that man. You, you put your mark yeah, into Mr. Yeah. Crane. He, he he knew that from from the beginning that that you were his girl. My goodness, that and he was going from orphanage to orphanage. He could have chosen anyone. So you were obviously the chosen for him, or, or the the only choice that he could have made. My, I'm so glad that you found each other because it seems, you know, looking through your story, your little you know, biography that you've made, that, that things turned out pretty good. I mean, with Mr. Crane, 
did he have a, a wife as well? And, and where did he bring you? Uh, he did. He uh, was married. Now, the thing you have to understand about my dad is he was in the Vietnam War. So he had been severely wounded. He was had been blown up and was the only one in his unit that was alive. And then they took him and they had him do like multiple surgeries. So when I met this man, he only had two fingers on each hand. And so it was hairy scary to me, you know? Yeah, so he, my father had been through a lot. And um, my mom, Mary Crane, um, had a strong faith and, you know, stuck by him through all of this. I mean, she could have just walked away and said, I'm not dealing with this. But she stayed with him and um, he called her. She was in Wichita, Kansas at a church. And he called her and said, Mary, I found a little girl. Um, I really believe she was the one. So my mom, I guess she told the church about it and they all prayed. Um, and the thing is, is they had told my dad, they're like, oh, I don't know if you really want to adopt her. So, you know, because I couldn't walk, I was three years old and I, I had no strength in my legs. Um, I was severely malnourished. I, my hair was like red, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen little children like that. Um, let's see what else. Okay, they said I would never graduate high school. I would never get married. I would never have children. Um, I'd be a burden to, to these people if they adopted me. So my father told my mom all this stuff. She told the church about it, and they prayed over me. And um, she said, go ahead, bring her. So he did. Yeah, it sounds and like these people, the people at the orphanage. Country. The, the people at the orphanage weren't setting you up to win. My goodness. If, if a man wants to adopt you, you let them adopt you. <laughs> and it seems like he was, it, well, I guess, did they have to vet him a little bit and, and ask, yeah. you know, questions about him? And, you know, does somebody just go down to Costa Rica and say, oh, I want that one. And then just, uh, you know, go away or, or, or is that, you know, <laughs> is, is there some kind of a, uh, some process to it? I, I don't really know. I just know that he said that he felt in his heart and spirit that he was supposed to take me home. So, okay. So, so that's, you know, so yeah, like he said, I've always been with this girl, you know. Yeah. So you get <laughs> home. Uh, I guess he brings you to, to Kansas. Is that where you're at? Um, I actually live in Indiana. Oh, okay. uh, I would say like 30 minutes from Notre Dame. So, it's easier if I just say that than try to say that I live in Queens Lake because people are like, Queens Lake, what's that? Oh, I understand. <laughs> so I just I, say I have a point. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm from Miami, yeah. you know, Fort Lauderdale, the Florida Keys. It's easier uh, to say the bigger places. But now I'm in Conway, Arkansas, 30 minutes north of Little Rock. So it's maybe it's easier to say oh, I'm, I'm from Little Rock. Unless you're familiar with the South, then you, you know, okay, Conway, Arkansas, that's a pretty big city up, uh, up up a little north of, of Little Rock. But you say that, that, okay, Mr. Crane, when he picked you up in, in Costa Rica, then what happened? Did he stay in Costa Rica a little mm -hmm. bit, or, or did he did he bring you back straight away? Um, no, he brought me back straight away. And um, I, the funny story is he said it's the first time I met my mother. And he said, uh, Carmen, mama, you know, because I didn't speak any English either. And he goes, the minute I saw her, I was like, boom, I jumped out of his arms. And then her is like, you can't get me away from this big, scary guy, you know. But um, <laughs> so, but yeah, no, he, he straight away came back here. And then um, and I was, I, they had a daughter. And so she had to learn how to share with a little sister now, you know. And I don't know what she was, what she thought, like if I was just going to be her doll or toy or something. So. You know, she found out real quick that having a sister meant, oh, you have to share and things like that. So, you know, we had that uh, language barrier because I didn't speak any English yet. I only spoke Spanish at the time. So, um, and then supposedly my parents are like, well, Carmen, you were great. But they went back and got three more after me later in life because, you know, supposedly I was such a good kid. <laughs> All right. So those of you that are looking to adopt, the, the, the kids of Costa Rica are the ones to get. It seems like those are the good ones. <laughs> no, I, I know that there's children all over the world that, that are, are, are in need of families. And that's something that has to be close to your heart. I have a, 
a younger sister that that was adopted. You know, she had uh, came from a family that had several you know children, very similar to your own uh, biological mother's uh, story, where she had too many children, so many that she couldn't handle. And then my mother, you know, after she had already raised two two boys. And a girl already had raised them and, and we're pretty much out of the house. And then here she says, well, you know what? Uh, I, she had just married uh, her, her new husband and he had never had children and they were having some trouble. So he, he adopted, they adopted this girl that was in need of a home. And now I have a little sister who's, you know, 20, 25 years, my younger, you know, my, uh, so she, yeah. So, so the age difference is, is amazing, but. You know, my mom did a great job raising her as well. So I, I, I appreciate the adoption process and, and the people that, that take the time to take a kid who otherwise wouldn't have a chance in the world. It looks like the orphanage, like I said, the, the orphanage was setting you up to fail. You know, they said, oh, that one's, that one's no good. Put her, put her in the corner there with your back facing you and uh, she'll never walk. She'll, she'll never go to college. She'll, I mean, she'll never go to school. She'll never marry. And here you're beating the odds. Yeah, you know the story. The story is unfolding. It, did when Mr. Crane did he bring you to Indiana or or did, was he living someplace else? He went straight to Indiana. That's where you're living. Yeah. Oh, so you were you've been yeah. living there uh, pretty much your whole life. You've been living yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, I've been forever. <laughs> Very cool. I mean, this is uh, that's funny. That's uh two two podcasts in two days. I've talked to to people from Indiana. Uh, the other the gentleman he was cool. he's from in the Indianapolis area. Uh, in that area. And I, I think, you know, when I was a little kid, uh, I'm from Miami, but from what I, I'm told, between zero and one years old, I lived in Indiana for a little bit, somewhere near Indianapolis. I have a uh, family that, that uh, teaches at Indiana Purdue. And, and um, th I have pictures of me as a wee wee tot in the snow. I, I don't want, I don't like the snow that much. I'm here in, Ar in Arkansas and there's a little snow every once in a while. It, it just kind of dusts just the, the ground, uh, you know, and here I'm, I'm talking about weather as we're, uh, we're, there's a hurricane coming, you know, <laughs> hurricane Laura is, is, is coming yeah. right up through Arkansas right now. As we speak, there's plenty of rain behind me in that window there. Uh, it, it's bad, but how, I mean, do you, do you have, uh, any, okay. any weather issues in, in Indiana? Uh, do you, do you like the snow or, or do you like the change in weather? <laughs> um. Yes, I, I really, I mean, I do like the changes. I love fall. I think fall is beautiful. I love Christmas. Absolutely love it. Like, once Thanksgiving is over, it is legal. It is time to play the Christmas music. I'm all about that. Um, love pretty much anything that's Christmassy, especially like the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. They're my total favorite because I, well, I love heavy metal guitar anyway. So, you know, we get Christmas and rock. Like, that's so awesome. Um, so I love that. Uh, like by February to March, I'm over it. Hmm. Totally over it. <laughs> <laughs> so when does the Christmas tree come okay. down? <laughs> For me, yeah. I drive, I keep it there until like middle of January, you know, as long as I can get away with it. You know? well, I guess that, um, that yeah, by March, I'm yeah. <laughs> I, I guess that is Spanish culture. I'm half Cuban myself. Like you know, like I said, from Miami, I'm third oh. generation here. My my grandparents are from Cuba. My mom was born in New York, but raised in Miami. And then here I'm born in Miami and raised in South Florida. So I'm third generation uh, Cuban, but I think Spanish, supposedly, I, I, was, a, I was a young boy, so I, I don't know much, but I, I, was, I spoke Spanish first. That was my first language. Now my Spanish is, is terrible, is so broken. Uh, is your Spanish still good? Is is no bueno. I mean, I have I have a girl. I it's weird because like I have Hispanic friends, and like I've even gone to like Spanish church and sung there and stuff. And I they're just real nice about it. I mean, because my Spanish is awful. Like I I speak Spanish is how I say. It. I hope that's okay to say it that way. But you know, like but, I don't want to say, oh yeah, I'm cool. I'm not. But I know how to get to the bathroom. Pero know? pero Carmen parece <laughs> Latina. Uh, you know parece. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you look Latina. You you have the the brown skin of most of my family. I mean, you have the definitely the the color traits that my whole family. You look like somebody in my family for sure. My my family reunion. I would see a Carmen Mills right there in the corner. 
you know, talking as loud, you know, I don't, man, I remember my family reunions. They, they would get louder and louder and louder. You know, two people have a conversation over here and two over there. And then that one was getting too loud. So this one will get louder and louder and louder and louder. I mean, how, how's the family situation since you, since you got there, you say there was other kids that you have at least one older sister. How was the relationship there? And how was the family life growing up as a, as a young baby, Carmen Mills? Oh, well, I mean, I, I mean, I think the first few years were pretty good, you know. Um, I, I honestly think I had a pretty good life. I I think that, like, you don't realize, and again, this is counseling, but um, when, you, when you've when been adopted or, um, and I can't speak for all adopted people, I'm talking about me specifically, like, I always had this, a deep appreciation for my parents adopting me and bringing me to this country, and I feel so blessed. It's it's such a good country, and um, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's a good country, you know. Um, I know. So I, but there was always like this little bit of a hole in my heart, you know. It's like uh, okay, I mean, you know, like I just kind of wanted to know who my mother was, and like I, you know, I always look around at people to see if anybody looks like me and. So I, I think that with that, I had a, that's where the depression kind of came in. And so by my teen years, I, I might not have acted so great all the time. Because, <laughs> you know, like I said, I, I struggled with depression. But at the time, I didn't know that that's what it was. Um, that's not my parents' fault. You know, that's just me trying to figure myself out, you know, and, and who are you and where, where you come from. And, and I think the other thing, too, was just because I was told, well, you know, you, you just like you really escaped death. I almost died because I was so malnourished. And so there's this kind of this constant, um, I've got to do something great with my life because I was given this opportunity. You know what I mean? Oh. Like you, you always feel like you have to do better. You have to um, make a difference because you were given this opportunity. And so, and I don't, and so some of that is guilt you know, led, but a lot of it is, is, is also spirit led, I think, you know, like, so I'm, I'm still figuring things out that way, which is crazy at my age, I think I'd have it figured out, oh. I don't, <laughs> so I'm getting there, you know, but so life, I think life was good though, you know, so I can't, definitely can't complain, you know. Oh, I'm in touch with many of those emotions that you've been yeah, I'm in touch with many of those emotions that you've been expressing, Carmen Mills. You know, I, I, I understand that, that you want to do better. You want to be the best person that you can be and do great things. You know, some, you. put your mark on the world like you put your mark on your dad's, uh, what is it, finger? You know, one of the one of the few fingers he had left, you bit him, right? You know, I guess it was, did you bite him in the finger? Yeah, so people want to leave their mark. I don't world. know, you know, I've been asking that sometimes. I well, that's, yeah. I, mean, that, that, I mean, it's, it sounds like yeah. you had a, a, a pretty decent childhood. How, what's your relationship like with your sister? Did she treat you like a doll? Did she try to paint your face and, and, and you know, uh, pull on your hair or, or did she treat you, uh, did you guys grow up pretty well as sisters? <laughs> oh gosh. Well, I mean, you know, she was an older sister, so of course she's probably a little bossy, but also, I think she was just looking out for me, you know. I mean, truthfully, um, I she's she's a really successful lady. She lives in uh, D.C. and she travels the world and runs a big company. And, and Anne Marie is extremely successful and smart, intelligent. And I'm very proud of her. You know, well, I hope she watches this so she can hear me say that because I don't know if we ever say stuff like that all the time. But no, she's she's doing her thing, you know. And like I said, I have. There was other people in this family. There were six of us all together. Wow! So we were a big family. Yeah. What were the well, who, who right. were the other two? You had mom, dad, sister, and and who are the other? Yeah, who were the other two that were in the family? Okay, so so there was Anne was first, then I was adopted, and then um, we had another little sister. Her name was Andrea. She's four years younger than me, and then there was three more that my parents went back and adopted from Costa Rica. Um, two brothers and a sister, and then um, after, like, I moved out of the house, they adopted more children, so it's, you know, and they also fostered a lot of kids, too, so 
by the 20th kid, you know, that's walking up to you and saying, hey, sisters, I'm like, okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you just get, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, okay. That's, you know, it sounds like the Cranes, that was their lease in life was to adopt children and raise children. I, that's, hey, I'm yeah. going to clap for them. Good job. You know, there's plenty of children out there that need homes, and it looks like the cranes are, are making uh, ma making room for many of those children, and you're one of them. And, and, and so they raised you. And what, what inspirations did you get from your uh, mom and dad? I'm, I'm guessing you're just going to call them your mom and dad since you, you don't know your, your biological family. Did you ever look up your, your biological family at all in Costa Rica or try to find them or have that inkling? That's funny you asked that question because my daughter, my 18 year old, she went on a missions trip to Costa Rica two summers ago. Two summers ago, she went to a Christian camp and um, she, you know, was meeting all these people there and uh, kids that worked there that were young, young adults. And um, she decided to do one of those DNA tests recently and to look up a little bit more about her heritage and um, found a name to somebody that was supposedly at the same camp that she was at. So she Instagrammed him real quick and said, hey, you know, my mom was originally from Costa Rica. And, and he was like, oh, for real? He goes, well, we have a long lost aunt we've been looking for. And so maybe, possibly, but that was more my daughter looking than me. I, I kind of have not really done that. Um, <laughs> so just because I think it's that whole, like, uh, scared to dare to dream, you know, about meeting my real mom. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Oh, it does. You know what I mean? No, it makes complete sense. Yeah. My goodness. It, it, it's like you trying to me meet your heroes, you know, or, or meeting people that you have high expectations from. Maybe a, an actor or a singer that you're, you're very interested in. You meet them, and then they fail on your expectations. Oh, they weren't that great. <laughs> wow. Maybe that wasn't, it didn't go as, as well as you could, as well as it could have gone or, or the way you wanted it to. But I'm, I'm glad your daughter has an interest in, in finding those roots. I mean, it's, it's nice to have roots. I, I mean, I have a roots like a radish. My, my wife, she, she um, can trace her family back to the Declaration of Independence. There's people in her family that signed the Declaration of Independence. And me, I can trace my roots back to, oh, my grandfather. And grandma, you know, that's it. And so she has roots like an oak tree, but I have roots like a, like a radish, you know? So, uh, you know, I could see people, you know, wanting to find out where they're from I, with all this 23 and me and, and, and this gene, you know, the, the gene, uh, finding tools. Oh, look, I'm from, uh, you know, Western Europe and I'm, you know, my, my generation from Spain and look at that there, you know, the, so, it, so to find that out is, it's something that's real new. That's real new, but it's very interesting yeah. to me. And I'm glad you're, you have one of your daughters that's, uh, that's looking into her past or your past and, and which in turn is her past as well. So uh, man, she kind of followed in your, in your father's footsteps doing missions to Costa Rica. That's, that's great. Yes. Yeah. He, your dad was doing great. missions like building, maybe building, building houses or taking messages to the masses. What, what was he doing over there? Uh, honestly, he just went there to adopt a child. Okay, that and then was, and then what did your daughter? What is your daughter doing? Was she there? Yeah. Well, at the time she was, uh, I think, sixteen years old, and she wanted to go on a missions trip with the youth group, and so they they went to Costa Rica and they worked at like a kids camp. So she was a counselor. So yeah. Yeah, my first daughter went to oh. South America. I can't remember exactly where. But I remember she went with her church group and it's, it's eye opening. You know, you think you were saying earlier that, that you're happy to be in this country. It's not perfect, but it, you know, you're happy to be here. But if you go off to another country, you're going to go, you know what? I am happy to be there. Let me go. Let me go back there. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, but hey, it's better than a lot of the places in the world. Uh, you know, I think we're not doing it completely right, but we're doing okay. You know, there, there, there's a, yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's great that she is following in the footsteps of her grandfather. Or, yeah. Of her grandfather, I guess that would be. And, um, so, all right. So you growing up in Indiana, where did the, uh, where did, what was the interest in school? What, what, what were you liking to do? You were playing music in school. Were you singing in school? What were you, 
or you, what were your activities as a, a young Carmen Mills? Oh. Yeah. Uh, as a young person, I, um, I was in a swing choir. I, I was in choir like my seventh, eighth grade. And then I wanted to be in a show choir. We call it the swing choir back in the day. I know they call it something different now. But, so I wanted to be in swing choir in high school and we had to try out. And, um, for some reason, the teacher had me, I was going to sing the song by Twyla Paris. Uh, the Warrior is a Child. I don't know if you know that song or not. I don't. I'm a That's few like bars. Really, I love the words. Check it out. Okay, I guess check I have to check it out. I mean, you can sing a little bit of it yeah. for me. A little bit. Warrior is a Child. Think about that. But I, I couldn't, like, that was my song because, like I said, I always had this ongoing battle of depression and stuff. And so, like, this song talks about that. Um, People say that I'm amazing, strong beyond my years, but they don't see inside of me. I'm fighting all the tears. They don't know. It's, it's just a really good song, but for whatever reason, the teacher had me get up in front of the whole class and sing for tryouts. She didn't do that with anybody else. This is Hostetler, if you're watching. So anyway, so she put the music on, and I sang it like I would normally sing at home. And, um, you know, I guess... She, I guess she was really wowed by it and was so excited that she asked if I could come sing at the high school and I was still in junior high. And so that kind of started that whole journey of really getting involved, getting involved in the music program at, at John Glenn high school. I was in the swing choir and I did dance and I did, um, flags, you know, where you throw the flag and yeah. Um, dance, dance team for basketball games. Uh, I did all the singing contests that they would have in high school, uh, <clears throat> super involved in art club and even Spanish club, even though my Spanish wasn't the greatest. So <laughs> I was pretty active in high school. Yeah. I thought oh, Spanish, yeah. I thought Spanish was going to yeah. be an easy A, but it wasn't, it really wasn't. Now tell yeah. me what, what is <laughs> swing choir? What, what kind of music do they sing? Was it big band stuff? What is swing choir? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, okay. you're definitely good dancing, you know, and you, you got a guide partner and a lot of lifts and yeah, back in the day, you know, it was hard. Like we practiced a lot and, you know, John Glenn, they had us go to all these different contests and stuff, but well, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. It was like, yeah, I could do this forever. Okay. Uh, so it's, now, I mean, it's singing while you're dancing like show. Okay. Yeah. I see why it's called show, show choir now. Okay. All right, that that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, and that had to affect you growing up. So, do you, do you still keep uh, the art uh, alive? Do you still uh, what What was your medium? What, do you still draw or, or do anything with the art world? Um, not as much. I mean, occasionally I'll just pick up a pencil and really draw a face or something, or you know, you'll just look at a flower and go, "Oh, I want to draw that." You know, what I mean, so that's but that's more for me. That's a fun thing. That's not work, you know. I did try to sell a few paintings back in the day, like I still have, but I'm like, no, nah, this is turning into work. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> well, good. Um, I, you know, you had the music. Um, what's yeah. Yeah. Do you have, uh, did you, did you play any uh, instruments uh, back then or, or do you play any instruments uh, now? Oh, well, I mean, I can. I'm sorry. You cut out no. a little bit. Say, say again. What do you play? Really. No, not really. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I can play a little bit. Yeah. Guitar, but nothing good. Okay, I'm nothing that not you would take on stage. Of anybody. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Hey, your <laughs> instrument is your voice and your dancing and and the way that you move on stage. That's fantastic. Now, do you, do you always perform as a solo or do you have a band that backs you up sometimes? I'm pretty much a solo thing. I occasionally, if I can find a guitar player to come and come alongside with me. Or my husband who plays bass, but he won't do it. But yeah, no, I'm pretty much a solo thing. Well, yeah, days, well, so I, I try to do the same thing. Well, how do you <laughs> how do you go out and gig as a solo singer with no guitar, no accompaniment, or or do you have like backing tracks that you put on and and you sing along with them? Yeah. That's your thing. Well, yeah, I have. So what I have is, yep, I've written some songs, and then I have a producer in. Uh, Dekula, Georgia. His name is Sean Hill from Uphill Studios. Uh, he's amazing. He um, will like 
produce my music and then make it so it's very professional. And then that's the stuff, like if you listen to anything on the radio of mine, that was produced um, there. So I use that to sing too. And like I said, occasionally I can find a guitar player to come along with me, you know, try to drag these guys along and say, come on guys, play along. But generally speaking, it's usually just me. So. How did you find the producer? Okay, so I, um, I've been writing music and recording CDs for the last 20 years. And I was one of those that I would go to like the different radio stations um, in South Bend and Christian radio stations. I'm like, would you play my song? Would you play my song? And they're like, well, we don't really do that. You know, there's a whole like system to this. I'm sure you know being in the radio station because I, I watched your thing, by the way. You're in your national entertainment. So you know that you, an artist can't just walk in and have someone play their music. So, But I tried that. I really did. They could have walked right up to me because I was... When I work at, at big radio stations like and you know, the ones that own 400 stations plus, <laughs> those guys won't let me do a thing. Maybe one song an hour. And then the mom and pops that own one station, they pretty much let you have mm -hmm. free reign. They hired you because you know how to do the job. They want you to make your personality part of their station. They know that the DJs are part of the show. You know, the bigger corporations mm -hmm. want to just sell ads. Yes, the little ones want to sell ads too, but they have a different mindset. Mm -hmm. And I like the little ones. If you would have brought me re your record, I would have went, let me take a listen. Oh, I like that. Let me put that right on the air for you and let 50,000 watts of power, uh, you know, take it to the masses, you know, and that, that's, uh, that's, that's a power that, that a DJ has, that a radio station has. And, and, you know, you can make somebody's whole yeah. career, you can make their whole life change using radio. And I'm hoping that, that, you know, this little podcast will help in that, in some respect, you know, it helping, help, helping to build people up. I, that's, that's what I've always wanted to do in radio. Yes. You make a couple bucks, not a lot radio. You don't make a lot of money. There's a handful of people that make millions, but there's for the most part, you make minimum wage and, and you get people in the community helped out. And, and that's what we're doing now, Carmen Mills. And I want to also thank you. You were talking about solo singing with a, um, with a backing track. Thank you for taking over my ra Radio What Facebook page because, my goodness, that is something that's brand new to me. And during this whole COVID-19 quarantine thing, artists are finding different and unique ways of how to keep themselves you know, in the public eye. And that's one way is taking over a Facebook page. And I thank uh, the, the, the nice people at uh, Nashville Entertainment Weekly for, for doing that. Uh, TJ and, and um, <laughs> Miss Santabanez uh, for taking, uh, Jill Santabanez for taking over. Uh, every time I say her name, I, I don't want to mess up that last name because it is a Spanish name. Santabanez. Santabanez. But, uh, you know, I, I thank you for, I thank you for taking over uh, the station and the, the locale that you had, it was you like kind of standing off in a field and holding a microphone and the camera was kind of far away. So I was like, that's a pretty interesting uh, picture. Whose idea was it to have you standing there by the bush, you know, just singing your song? Uh, singing it. I was, okay, so I was at a campground. It was called the Easy Camp. And the manager there was like, why don't you sing here? You know, she goes, the people here would love it, you know, and we'll make sure to kind of stay, you know, we'll stay social, social distance. And so that's what we did is we just put it, cause, uh, there's a pond right there with yeast and stuff. So we put it there. And then as I started thinking, people just started pulling in on their golf carts <laughs> and lawn chairs. And we just had, we just had a really good time that night. And thank you for letting me do that. So that was great. Um, but that was the, ma the manager from the campground. It was her idea for me to come here. And I really appreciate that. So, Carmen Mills, that was the byproduct of it, was you gave these people an outlet. They've probably been quarantined just like everybody else. You know, I I was stuck yeah. in, in, in the house for, you know, pretty much two months without with no gigs. And, you know, and imagine, here here's this nice lady who's going to sing for us. Oh, yeah, we're coming. We'll, we'll, we'll bring a mask, whatever we got to do to social distance, but we're coming. I'm, man, they must have been happy. How many people, because I didn't see anybody in the in the – in the video, how many people were kind of around you at the time? Uh, you know, I 
basically, I, I just kind of looked around and I saw like some people sitting in lawn chairs. Then I saw like golf carts just pulling up and then same on the other side. But I got to be honest with you, I was really focused in on, you know, singing and making sure that I was looking at the camera so that, you know, that you guys, I was looking at you guys. So I don't know. Um, what do you think, Bob? Um, how many people? Maybe 30, maybe 30 to 50. So I, you know, well, I, I think. Yeah. Well, Carmen Mills, th that, what you just said, kind of gets you ready for TV. I mean, you're ready to be on TV. You're not b bothering with the audience. The audience you're worried about is right there in that camera, right there, <laughs> looking right into that yeah. camera. I mean, because when I'm looking down, it w right, well, for those that are listening to the podcast, the audio version, there's a video version up on my YouTube, and I encourage you to check that out so you can see Carmen Mills' pretty face right there next to me. <laughs> and as I'm pointing, I'm pointing at you, see? But, um, y y you know, the, the, the thing that you're, uh, whenever I'm looking down, I'm looking at your at your uh, video, but when I look straight into the camera, that's when I'm focusing on you, America, you, the world, you, the universe. <laughs> so it, it's um yeah, you're you're ready to be on stage. And ha, have you ever been on stage in front of in front of in, on TV in front of a camera? Um, yes, I have actually. I I was in Atlanta, Georgia. I was on a show called. Uh, Channel 57, that was fun. It was weird, you know, it was different. It was like, yeah, you don't know, like, which way to look, which camera am I supposed to look at? Because they're like, okay, you're on, and they hold the side up, and it says three minutes, two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, and you go out there, and you're like, where do I look? You just, then you just do it. You know, once the music starts, you got to just kind of forget about all that. And just focus on why you're there and, you know, put it out there, right? <laughs> that's that's so funny. You look at talk shows sometimes, and they're they're going to hold up something for you. And yeah, which camera should I? What, what should I go to? This one, that one over there. Which camera? It, it still happens all the time, and where people will say, and we still don't know which way to look, and you just got to follow that red light. Yeah. Follow that red light because you know the camera's changing. Now, it, it, with that that fifty seven uh, show, was that like a variety show? What kind of a show was that? And when was when was that? Uh, that was last April. Um, as I said, it was in Atlanta, Georgia. It was, uh, I, I think it's a Christian uh, TV show. They have, I was there and then I was on Friends and Family. And I got to tell you, funny story between you and I, well, and now anybody who's listening. Yeah, nobody's listening. Don't worry. It's just you and me. I, okay. <laughs> just us. The first time I, I did a live TV show and they're like, so we did a quick practice, you know, like a quick sound check. And then the camera came on, and I was singing the song, I Look to You. I, I don't know if you listened to that one or not, but in this, in the chorus, it, it goes, I look to you. Well, I was so nervous. Seriously. I, I call you Dan. You're Dan, right? Sure. I was so nervous. Is that right? I want to make sure I'm yes. saying Dan. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was so nervous that when it came to the part, I look to you, my leg was shaking so bad. But I took my hand and I grabbed my leg and I'm like, I look to you. And like, it looked like I was just really getting into it. But what I was really doing was trying not to fall over because I was shaking so bad. This, uh, my, my right leg was shaking that hard. That's how nervous I was. I don't know why it all went there. But so I did. I grabbed my leg and people were like, yay, she's so into this. She's so, and it was really, I was just actually terrified. So, but <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> hey, and that and that was your first experience last April being in front of a camera on uh, a show. I mean, uh, what was the response on that? that oh, two yeah, years that was ago, my, my leg just started shaking out of nowhere. It was the weirdest. It was so involuntary. I thought it was like, I guess I was just that nervous, and like I just grabbed it. It looked so dramatic. It was like, wow, she's so into this. She just loves, and I do love God. By the way, it was like, oh, she's so in love with the Lord. She's just. So, I mean, but I was actually terrified. <laughs> well, there's no doubt my in my mind that, that 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 God has, has played a, an immense um, an immense part of your life. You're you're primarily in the Christian um, genre. Is uh, do you ever delve outside, or or is it primarily you're you're writing Christian music uh, only, Chris, uh, Carmen Mills? Um, I mean, I Christian music, um, just songs about love, hope. 
you know, but I mean, I, I don't want to just be like, oh no, I only write Christian or Christians because I think that everybody needs hope. Everybody, you know. So I, I'm hoping that, like, I, I told my youth pastor once, I'm like, I'll go sing at a bar. I don't care. I mean, you know, we need hope. Yeah. You can't just, we can't just stay inside the church walls and sing to people who already know the truth. You've got to be willing to step outside of that and sing to people that d haven't heard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's part so, of the doctrine, isn't it? You got to go preach the word, right? <laughs> that's, that's part of the yeah. deal. You know, once you know this good news, hey, you know, I got this good news. I'm not going to keep it to myself. I'm going to go uh, go tell some other people about it. And yeah, I, I do karaoke shows over at right. bars all the time. Every Friday night, I'm at the Arab in Conway, Arkansas. And, and I, on occasion, I'll get people, hey, can I sing a Christian, a, a gospel song? I'll go, yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. These people need churching up in here. You know, there's a reason why yeah. some, some of the people are drinking because they're depressed. You know, that's something that you're in touch with. Uh, some of them are, are having some sorrows. They're going through some stuff and they need that drink to, uh, or they feel like they need that drink to, to pass that time away. So you singing a, an uplifting song, you could help somebody out. Uh, you, uh, do you feel like you have helped people out? Do people, have people come up to you and say, Carmen Mills, man, I was feeling kind of blue. I was feeling depressed, but I heard, heard you sing that song and I'm like, I feel so good um, now. Yeah, I, I have. I mean, I guess, honestly, I have heard that. I heard that a lot when I was younger. Like, people would come up to me and say, just keep singing, you know, keep spreading that hope and courage. Because I've been doing this a long time. So, but, you know, you, you still always wonder, you know, am I am I doing the right thing? And, I, and who, who out there needs to hear this? Because I, I know, you know. You're doing the right thing. You're absolutely doing the right thing. you got to a great family there, a husband that loves you, uh, four girls, right? And and you you're raising them. I mean, how, you could brag on the husband, you could brag on okay. brag on the girls. What what's the husband do? Uh, what's uh, how how's he do? He, what does he do? He's he's a machinist. That's cool. And he's a, uh very good at his job, by the way. Um, he, yeah, he's been doing it for how many years, Bob? 30 years he's been a machinist, and uh, honestly, I have to say, uh, and I'm really grateful for where my husband works and his employment, because if he didn't have that job, I would not be able to just go out and write music and, and go to Nashville or Georgia and do the recordings and stuff if my husband, uh, one, didn't support it, and two, wasn't working the way he was. I mean, you know, because it's honestly... Producing music and getting out there to you know do these TV shows and all this stuff it, it costs money you know oh yeah absolutely does absolutely you know, so does I'm really yeah he's a hard worker no anyone that wants to be uh, you know any kind of a, an entertainer in the any entertainment business uh, you give up a lot of things and one of those things could be family so it takes a certain kind of uh, a fellow or, or a certain kind of partner to uh, to put up with that or, or to appreciate that or to to be behind you. It's nice. It sounds like you have a good team behind the Carmen Mills music uh, for sure. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, and, and then brag on the kids. I mean, uh, you know, they, they came about, you've done great things. You made, you made some children, you, you're fruitful and multiplied <laughs> Four. wow. Uh, yeah. 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 Four times, right? Even when I was told I couldn't. So, Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I mean, how are the kids doing? What do they do? Okay, so my oldest uh, just turned 28, and she uh, is very active in our church. She's on the same, she sings on the same praise team that I'm on. Um, we sing very well together, actually. Like, we can harmonize like nobody's business. Um, Melaine is very easy to sing with. She's also a hairdresser here in the area, and everybody loves her. Like, she's having to turn people down because that's how many clients she gets. Um, my second daughter, Marissa, is 27, and she's getting ready to have her first baby. Um, and it's been married for nine years, I think. And my third daughter, Michaela, is getting married in November, and she is still finishing up her college. Mom and my youngest just graduated high school. 
That's fantastic, man. So, that, now they're they're out of the house. You've done your job. Now you can go do whatever, whatever you want. No, and and I do talk to a, a lot of artists that that and singers in particular. I mean, there was one that I, I talked to, and she uh, she had a chance about thirty years ago to open for Tanya Tucker, and that would have made her whole career. But instead, she got pregnant, and she said, "I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to be a mom." She was a stay-at-home mom. Mm-hmm. She, you know, went through her time and yeah. and and raised children. And now she's trying to go, you know, go at it again. Go back to Nashville and and get things back up uh, up and running. But you know, it, it sounds like even though you were raising children and primarily you were a stay-at-home mom, is that is that what I'm getting? Yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you were. I mean, I had jobs here and there, you know, like I said, but my my primary job. You know, well, <laughs> you were able to give your children what you didn't have as a little three year old in Costa Rica. You didn't have those formative years that zero to three. You were able to give them, Uh-oh. you know, someone that that would hold them, that would love them, right from the beginning, and that's fantastic. It sounds like you you've done the job. You know, we want our children to be better than we are. So we try to do things to build them up, to make them better. And then, hey, I mean, from what you described, you've done great. You and you. you and your hubby, you know, <laughs> and a machinist, 30 years, man. That's a hard working dude right there. You know, works with his hands. Ah, oh, you gotta you gotta keep her. You did good. <laughs> well, all right, all right. Well, I mean, um, okay, as we cruise through as we cruise through, I, I think we're having a little bit of a lag time here. With the uh, with the Skype, I know that I saw on your Facebook, and I'm looking around you. Are you are you living in the camper? Yeah. Are you in a camper now? What like a, a camper that actually drives? Uh, that kind of a camper? Not yet. Um, we did get a camper. Um, I'm super excited about it because it it's no secret that it's my desire to live in a bus or get a bus and travel around and sing. But you know. Oh, you know, like back in the old days when people did that. So, but we did get a camper, but um, we do hang out here quite a bit. I think it's easier to uh, do my shows here and uh, my interviews and stuff. But eventually, you know what? If I ever move to Nashville, it's a possibility, yeah. So, but no, I'm not, I'm not actually living here yet, but I would. I like it. Well, Carmen Mills, it sounds like the whole family's right there in front of you. Uh, you know, every time you you have a a, a thought that maybe you don't, Keep up. yeah, maybe you have a, a thought that you don't know the answer to. Your husband's right there, your daughter's right there. It sounds like your family's real tight and close together, and that's got to be inspirational. That's got to be good for your soul, right there. So I, I'm I'm very happy that you have that, Carmen Mills. I'm very happy about that. Well, tell the people a little bit of uh, how to get a hold of you, since uh, I think the Wi-Fi is starting to cut out a little bit. Uh, give the people an idea of how to get a hold of you, and then uh, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll t- oh okay. <laughs> Looks like the Wi-Fi is starting to cut out on me. <laughs> I think it reconnected. Okay, well, um, give the people an idea of how to get a hold of you and how you want them to connect with you on social media and where they can find your your cool uh, videos and and music and stuff. Well, I think I lost her. I'm gonna try to reconnect. Let's see what happens. And we're back, Carmen Mills. Hello. There you are, Carmen Mills. You're back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> That's all right. I, I still have you you up on the screen there. Uh, but uh, oh. let's finish this thing off. Uh, go ahead and and tell the people how you want them to to connect with you uh, socially, um, and and where they could find those cool videos and and all the the stuff that your kids are getting you into, and uh, <laughs> and, and all your good music. Where do they find you online, Carmen Mills? Okay, if you go to, um, honestly, if you go to iTunes, you can find, like, Carmen Mills. Uh, look for the song, I Look To You, or I'm Coming Home. That'll kind of get you started. Or you can go to Carmen Mills Music Facebook or um, Instagram or CarmenMillsMusic.com, or I'm on YouTube. So Fantastic. Yep. <laughs> well, what, I'll, what I usually do, I mean, are there any other avenues that you want to explore? You want to tell people? You know what's coming up on the horizon, or or uh, you know, how, do you want any uh, to tell anybody anything else about you, Carmen Mills? Um, I would say just 
uh, check out my new video. I did it with uh, through Nashville Entertainment Weekly. It's called I'm Coming Home. And I hopefully it'll just be a video that, uh, like I said, with everything going on, you know, hopefully we can get some encouragement from that song. It was my first attempt at a country song. So um, kind of cool. So check that one out. I, I think you'll like it. That and um cool. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen it? <laughs> no, that is pretty cool that you're stepping out uh, of your yeah. of your comfort zone into into yeah. other areas. So, I mean, uh, there's more to you. People are layered. People are not just one thing. Uh, people have yeah. to have to realize you're not black. You're not white. You're not red. You're not brown. You're not country. You're not rock. You're you're, you're more than one thing. There's other things that that inspire you. Uh, you know, so you don't. Yeah, you don't have to hold yourself to one thing. But Carmen Mills, yeah. I mean, I've had a pleasure chatting with you. I don't want this to be the last time that we talk to each other as things progress, as time goes on, I want to know more about you and, and more about the new projects that you're doing. But uh, usually I finish these things off with last words for the people and Carmen Mills, this could be words to live by something that you you've done in your past or something that you heard in your past that, that you, you know, you live by this mantra, or it could be just whatever pops into your head at this moment in time, Carmen Mills, last words for the people. Um, just have faith, guys. Um, keep going. Don't give up. You know, um, God has a plan. He has a plan for all of us. So stay strong and have hope and know that you are not alone. Well, there you have it, party people. Carmen Mills, a girl from humble, humble beginnings. You know, the, the orphanage said she didn't have a chance. She got no shot, kid. You got no shot. Well, you proved them all wrong, Carmen Mills. I appreciate you so much for telling part of your story here on the what makes you famous podcast i appreciate it so much and you're giving music to the world you're inspiring other people who may think that they don't have a shot but through your through your music you might inspire someone else in turn to let them know hey they are somebody they are worth something in this world yeah you're doing that that's that's an amazing thing if you think you're not doing what you should be doing you're doing what you should be doing you're doing the Lord's work, okay? Uh, you know, keep that faith. I appreciate that you have that faith. And, uh, you know, and make sure that you, uh, you know, let people know. I mean, that's part of the deal. But, you know, I've, I've read the Bible. I know that's in the, it's in the book. You know, once you know uh, what's in there, you, you tell other people about it. You want other people to know about it. You're excited. So uh, you get to do it in song. Uh, that's, that's one step better. You know, you're not, you're not just talking the talk. You're singing the talk. <laughs> you're, you're singing the words. That's beautiful. All right. I know I'm trying to be eloquent and everything, but I do appreciate that. Uh, I know you, that you're, that you're part of my realm now uh, that I do have a Carmen Mills in my, uh, in my circle. <laughs> Thank you for being a part of the show. The what makes you famous podcast. Now, if you turning my attention to you, my loyal listener, my loyal viewer, if you would like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call. 501-470-6386 or email info at radiowhat.com. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, radiowhat.com, djlittlerock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.